What's up everyone, welcome back to another episode of AWS Tutorial. And today I'm going to show you how to test your Lambda functions locally and deploy that to your AWS account using something called the Serverless Application Model, aka SAM, which is a very powerful tool to speed up your development process. I know in my previous tutorials that involved Lambda functions, what I always did was just to write the code in VS Code and then copy and paste that into the Lambda console and then test it that way. And that is only for the demo purposes. Um, obviously, that's not the correct way to do it, not the best way to do it in real life. And today I'm going to show you the correct way to do it. But before we get to the demo, I want to make sure that we have the correct software installed in our laptop first. So we need three things for these tutorials. The first one is Docker, uh, because we need to use that to dockerize our environment so that we can test it in our local machine. Um, and then the second one is the AWS CLI because we need that to deploy our Lambda function from our local machine to the AWS account. And then the third one, obviously, is the SAM CLI. And I'm going to show you how to install them one by one. OK, so the first one is Docker. So you can go to this website. And depending on your machine environment, you can uh, choose the specific versions of it um, to download for Mac, Windows, and Linux. So just click on them and follow the instructions. And then after you install that, the way to make sure that it runs is uh, so this is actually Docker desktop. Uh, so if I do that, it's going to start up the Docker desktop software. Okay, so Docker is started. Uh, so make sure that you have this local running here. And after you click on it, it should show you all the information. Uh, so that's how you know Docker is starting and running in your machine now. Um, so the second thing that we have to do is to install the uh, AWS CLI. Um, you can go to this website to install it based on your uh, environment as well or operating system. And if you have a Mac uh, OS, uh, I recommend using Homebrew. Uh, just do this command in your um, terminal and then you're, you're going to be all set. So after you successfully install the AWS CLI um, and open your terminal, and do a AWS version, you should be able to see something here. Uh, so that means the AWS CLI is installed correctly. And now what you have to do is you have to connect your AWS profile in your local machine to your actual AWS account. So how the way that you do it is do AWS config. And it's going to ask you to, to enter the access key and all that information. And after you do that, you should be able to see a folder called .aws here. And then if you cd into it, um, you should be able to see a config file and credential files. Um, and if you have multiple accounts, uh, like I do, you should be able to see something like this, where you have the default profile, and then you have a account number one, account number two, and account number three. And each of them has the access key ID and ex uh, secret access key. Uh, which is you specify or you can just create this file manually if you want to and then later on i'm going to show you how to use which one specifically so later on we're going to use the aws one account uh, for this demo so i'll show you how to use this profile specifically even though it's not a default profile so let's clear that and then the third one that you have to Installed is the sam cli which you can go to this website uh, to download that in depending on your os and again, if you are using a Mac, um, again, I recommend using the Humbrew uh, CLI to install it, which is pretty simple. And after you install that, you should be able to um, do something like this and get the version number to make sure that it's installed correctly. Okay, so now we have everything installed and ready to be used, and we have our Docker running. So we are ready to build our basic Lambda test it locally and then deploy that into our AWS account. So without further ado, let's get to it. OK, so right now I have VS Code open a empty folder called Tutorial. Um, so the first thing that we have to do is to instantiate or initiate our same project. Uh, so let's open Terminal, uh, New Terminal. And then we're going to do same init, hit Enter. And then right here is going to walk you through uh, each of the options you have. And uh, I'm just going to use the Quick Start template. And then it's going to ask you to choose which template you want. Um, so I'm just going to choose the Hello World one because it's the most basic one. And then it's going to ask us to use the package type. Uh, let's do zip. Oh, it's asking if we want to use it or not. 
Um, let's do customize. So no, we're gonna do it by ourselves. Um, so now we're gonna choose a runtime for it. Um, let's use Python, and I believe I have been using Python 3.8 for a while, so let's choose that. Uh, so 17, and then what package do you want to use? Now it's zip. And then would you want to enable X-ray tracing? No, I don't need that. Would you like to enable monitoring using CloudWatch? Yeah, sure, why not? And then project name, mm, send tutorial demo, but you can name it whatever you want. Okay, so it already took in all the um, inputs that we provided, uh, so it's gonna take a minute to create it. Okay, so it seems like it's done creating our basic project right here, skeleton. Um, so there's a new folder called Sam Tutorial Demo here. Um, let's cd into the project so that we can operate on it. So clear everything, and now let's delete the things that we don't need. Um, so we don't need this for now at least for this demo. And then uh, in here, let's see what is in this template, which is the most important uh, file. Okay, so the first line is the template version, which is, so AWS created that version number by the date, uh, which is when they launched it. Um, so I think this is the only version they have. Uh, don't change it to any other dates. And that is also the version ID, uh, don't change that. And for the description, uh, you can write something like, this is just a demo app or demo lambda, something like that. We don't need comment, so we're gonna delete that. So global function-wise timeout, uh, let's set it to 30 seconds. And then memory, uh, let's do 200. And then resources, so in this demo we're only gonna create a lambda function we're gonna need when we're not gonna need anything else uh, so so in here is function yes that's our lambda function config and then code URI and this is to specify where you are saving the lambda code um, so right now the default is uh, hello world uh, we're probably gonna change that to be sim tutorial demo or something like that and we're gonna change the folder name. All right, and then inside this folder, what it has is something called the app. Um, and then, all right, let's go back here. And then inside the app, we're gonna have a Lambda handler as a function that we're gonna invoke. So let's get in here. We can leave it as is for now. We're gonna to get to it later. And then the runtime, we're gonna use Python 3.8, and then we're gonna use uh, Intel Core. You can use, you can change it to M1 if you want to, but uh, Intel is okay as well. Events, uh, we don't need this for now. And then we don't need everything else because those are just for, um, they create like API gateway for you as well, uh, but we don't need that for this tutorial. So we can delete everything on the bottom. And yeah, this is all you need uh, for our config file, the template file for the Lambda function. And now let's go to our app.py and change our Lambda function to something actually meaningful. Um, so we don't need this. Uh, sure, let's import that. Actually, we don't need this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add a external library. Uh, let's Panda, and then in our event object, uh, let's take in a number called count or something. Uh, so event, we're gonna call it count, and then we're gonna have some data uh, that we're gonna use the count to construct it. So for i in range of count, so we're gonna append uh, just times 10, uh, make it simple. And then we're gonna create a data frame out of it. And then we're gonna set the columns to be numbers. Actually, it needs to be in an array. That should be panda, like that. And 
then we're just gonna print out theta equal to hmm, why not like this and then in the return message we are gonna do something like this status code 200 and then message success actually do one more uh, how many counts we're gonna take in the number of counts we have input it okay that's it for our lambda function and since we are using pandas so we need to add that to our requirements so that uh, it's gonna package everything so requirements dot text pandas and then now what we're gonna do is we're gonna construct our event object locally so they can uh, use that as, as our input and the place where we do that is under the event folder and then event.json so this is a complicated version of the event object it uses like an API um, format of it uh, but we're gonna keep things simple uh, all we're gonna have is something called count uh, let's specify 9 or something like that and that's it this is all we need and now we're ready to test it locally so remember I mentioned that I have four different AWS account uh, profiles in my local machine and I'm going to choose the AWS one account for that for this tutorial specifically and now this is the time for us to uh, specify that and I'm going to show you how to do it. So all we need to do is in our uh, terminal we're going to do something like export AWS profile equal to AWS one because that's the name and then hit enter and now we are using the AWS one uh, account profile to, to do it so now the first thing that we have to do is uh, build the same project so simply just do sam build okay so it's done and you can see that it creates a dot AWS dash sam folder here and it should have everything here uh, and when we click on the build uh, it still has the hello world function name. Uh, we don't like that. Let's change it to be something more specific. Same demo function. And now when we do build again, it's going to change the name. Okay, so it's done. And now it changes to same demo function. And inside that it has like all the packages and our uh, app.py lambda function. Um, and now we're ready to test it locally. And the way to do that is sam local invoke and we're going to copy the function name paste it here and now we need to specify which event test event we want to use for this test so we're going to do dash e events which is inside this folder Oops. events and then we're going to choose that and then hit enter it's building the image because it, is, it needs to dockerize the environment. Oh, seems like there is an error. Module pandas has no attribute data frame. Let's see. Oops, it should be camo case. Um, so since we make changes to it, uh, we need to build it again. So same build. But at least you can see that it's actually working properly, like the, the same part of it. Uh, it tells me there's an error in it. So now you, you save some time because like otherwise you have to copy everything, paste it in the Lambda console, um, and then test it that way instead of finding out the error right here. Um, so the build is done. And now if we do the test again, it should be successful. Ah, there's an error unexpected key argument columns okay i have a lot of synthetic errors today i don't know why um that should be lowercase and now let's build it again okay hopefully this time it works okay so it's working properly this time um so we were telling it to print data frame uh, which is we pass in the count as nine in here uh, so it goes through the for loop and then times the each number by 10 so 0 0 to 8 um, And then we're going to call that numbers and that is the data frame 
and then it returns something called status code 200 message success and count 9 okay so it looks like it's working properly in our local and now let's deploy that to our AWS account and see how it works there so when I exported the AWS profile earlier this one is actually for the deployment purpose uh, we didn't need to use that to to test it locally um, this is when we need to use it and the way to deploy that is so this is telling the uh, SAM CLI that this is the AWS profile that we want to use so we want to deploy the Lambda function to this account specifically we're going to do same deploy dash dash guided press enter stack name yes AWS is is one yes yeah, just telling you that, are you sure you want to deploy it? And hit yes, allow the creation, yes. Disable rollback, you're sure. Save the config, uh, I hit no for that. Okay, so now it's uploading to our uh, AWS account and it's gonna create a Lambda function for us. But now let's log in to make sure that we don't have anything there yet. In. Okay, so right now I'm on the homepage of that AWS account and let's go to the Lambda function page. To make sure that there's nothing there yet okay so it's empty and now let's go back to our vs code um, and it's asking us to confirm to deploy and obviously we're gonna hit yes and it's gonna take a minute and it's actually using cloud formation in the background uh, to do the deployments and stuff so right now if we go to cloud formation we should be able to see a stack uh, that's being spun up to create our lambda function there and yep this is great in progress these are from before when i uh, play around with it and now let's go okay so successfully created the stack and if we refresh it should be successful complete and now let's go back to the lambda function and hit refresh and we're able to see our new function is created here and it says it's only created 30 34 seconds ago and now let's click on it uh, look at the settings to make sure that the config matches with what we have so timeout 30 seconds and memory 200 megabytes which should match with what we have set up here 30 seconds and 200 megabytes and then if we test the code we should be able to see something similar test event and then count 9 and that hit test and it's successful and this is the return object I should be able to see the data frame it got printed out it as well so the first column and the numbers from 0 to 8 and okay so it seems like it's working and now let's make some changes to it and deploy it again uh, so let's go back to the Lambda function uh, print us something like hi bye and then we're gonna do the build again okay and now we're gonna deploy Hit yes yes confirm change yes yes Deploy this change, of course. Update in progress. And if we go here again and then refresh, we should be able to see it in progress. Okay, so it's done and it should show that it's done too. And let's go back to the functions. Hit refresh, 17 seconds. And now let's test it again and see if we get the most updated code. Oh, I should have saved it as event. Hit test. Okay, so uh, same return message. We didn't change that, um, but in the printing statement, we have the high in the, before printing out data, and then we have by at the end. Uh, so it seems like it's working. Um, the lambda function was successfully updated uh, using the same CLI. So this is it everyone, I hope you've learned something and if you like this video, I hope you can give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.